Hello, Mary Richards. Hello, Lizzie Lasseter. Welcome to another episode of today's anatomy question. www.experientialanatomy.yoga. That's the website. Go there. Stay in the loop. Today's topic is going to be the foot and this cue that I hear all the time in yoga classes, stand on all four corners of your foot. So what they're talking about is putting pressure on all four corners of the two corners of the heel and then two corners of the front of the foot. So does that make anatomical sense? In a nutshell, no. <laughs> okay, uh, so let's take a moment and just break down feet. Okay. Um, the largest, uh, I'm going to start though with the hip, okay? The largest bone in the body is the femur, the thigh yeah. bone. The strongest bone in the body is the tibia, the shin bone. Really? That's a good trivia question. The densest bone in the body is the calcaneus, the heel. Okay. The calcaneus is the densest bone in the body for a reason. It is designed specifically for weight bearing. Right. I mean, the whole body is standing, all of my... 150 pounds are standing on my heel bone, essentially. Exactly. And when you look, I get so excited. <laughs> when you look at the, where the ankle is formed, okay, it's formed by the tibia, the fibula, that strut-like bone on the outer lower leg. Uh, there's a small bone in your ankle called the talus and the calcaneus. Right. Okay, your calcaneus is directly below those bones. Right. Your metatarsals, the long bones of the feet. So the, the metatarsals are here, right? Yes, the long bones are of the feet. And then the phalanges, the toes, they're not under the tibia. The way those bones are designed, they're designed for propulsion. And, mm -hmm. and balance as you shift weight and are on uneven terrain, mm -hmm. okay? So it's really the heel bone that is designed for weight bearing, and that's where we want to center our energy, say, in Tadasana, in mountain pose. We want the weight distributed evenly around the perimeter or the, the circumference of the calcaneus. Mm -hmm. Okay, so should we show it? Should I do Tadasana? Okay, so you're standing in Tadasana. Mm -hmm. And Lizzie, I want you to uh, lift all 10 toes and kind of flare your toes and then place them down on the mat. And now try that, uh, I, I'd like you to try and embody that instructional guidance of putting weight on the four corners of the feet. Yeah, I have to sort of lean forward. Yes, and, and you have to lean forward a bit, and, and I'd like to know where you feel most of the weight in your, in your feet themselves then, and also in your knees. Well, you know what? Actually, I immediately feel a pinch in my lower back. Yes. <laughs> in my sacrum. And then I feel um, I feel it underneath my big toe a lot and on my inner knee. Yes. And that's where we don't want it. Hmm. Because that instructional request of placing the weight on the four corners of the feet is it's not based on anatomical reality. And then it's also not responsible respectful, if you will, of the kinesiology of the feet, you're, you're going to tend to overload onto the big toe side of the foot, which sets us up for pronation, which then goes right up into the knees and travels up to the SI joint. Okay, exactly the chain I just sort of <laughs> redesigned. 
<laughs> okay. covered. So what I'd like you to try instead is I'd like you to flare all 10 toes, maybe wiggle them a bit, and then just relax the toes. Mm -hmm. Let them find their place. They know where to go. And now I'd like you to press down into the front edge of the heel mm -hmm. and press into the apex, that center back of the heel. Mm -hmm. And I'd like you to tell me what happens in your feet, in your knees, et cetera. Yeah, so my weight shifts back automatically towards the back of the foot, and the, I felt a sense of energy lifting up the spine. Yes. Do you feel, Lizzie, like the, the arches of the feet draw up away from the mat as well? Yes. Yes. Because that's how, that's, that's what happens when we properly distribute weight into the heel bone where it belongs. The bones of the feet are long, skinny bones. They are designed to propel us forward and to help us navigate uneven terrain. It is that calcaneus, that heel bone, that is specifically de designed to carry the weight of the body. Okay, so let me just show, highlight for people. So you're saying you want me to move the weight here? Can you see that? Yes. Yes, on the front edge of the heel, and then what's called the apex of the heel, Lizzie, which is right where your Achilles, your Achilles tendon comes down. Oh, here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But on the heel itself. So there's your Achilles tendon. Yeah, that's where we want the weight. Okay, so here. Yeah. Okay, and then here in the front. Across that entire front edge. Okay, can you show again, because I think that would be helpful for us slower learners. <laughs> show again, now maybe we can look from the side and talk a little bit about what you were saying in the beginning of this session about the fibula and coming down and the weight of the calcaneus. Like, locate us in space where the calcaneus is and what's happening okay. from the side view. Okay, so the the bump on the outer ankle, mm -hmm. that bony knob, that's something called the lateral malleolus. Some people call it the malleolus, you know, tomato, tomato. Okay. So lateral malleolus, that is the end of your fibula. Your fibula is a strut-like bone that begins proximally near your outer knee, mm -hmm. and then it travels down the leg to your ankle. Okay. It's here at the malleolus. Yes. Okay. And it is attached to the shin bone with a special membrane that's called an interosseous membrane. Inter meaning between, osseous meaning bone. So interosseous. Sort of here. Yes, exactly. Okay. okay. And it's actually the fibula that has a profound effect on your ankle mobility. Okay. Okay. And it is articulating with what's called your talo, the talus, which you can't see. It's inside your ankle and your calcaneus, your big heel bone, which is the bone you can feel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what we feel hitting the earth and when we're massaging our feet, that's the calcaneus. And looking at you from the side view, you can see that the calcaneus is directly below the shin bone and the fibula kind of forms an outer wall. So this is the bone, the calcaneus, that you were saying is the densest bone in the body. Yes. Okay. And what did you say remind us about the fibula was the strongest bone in the body? No, the, the tibia is the strongest. Oh, the tibia. Really okay. hard to break your shin bone. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. So. Okay. And can I add, Lizzie? Please. The, the ankle joint of all of the joints in the body 
the ankle joint has the most bony congruence. Mm -hmm. The the ankle joint has the most bone to bone contact. Which makes sense. If yeah, if we think about that, especially if we think about it in terms of gravity (laughs) and walking or running, it makes perfect sense. Because we need both mobility and stability in the ankle joint to bear the weight of the body and to move through space. Okay, last question here. What? So this, what we're trying to deconstruct here, and is the is the myth that has permeated the yoga community that in Tadasana we should be standing on all corners of the feet. What yep. is your replacement cue for that? Let's just remind, let's go over that. What are, kind of things are you talking about to invite your students to move their weight further back in reality, in alignment with the reality of where the weight is actually being born, which is on the last third of the foot? Yes. So what I say, I, I do explain, you know, how the bones of the feet are specifically designed for propulsion and balance and that the heel bone is anatomically designed for weight bearing. I am that much of a nerd and I do impose my nerdery (laughs) on my students. But what I instruct is I say flare all 10 toes. Okay. And what does that do? Do you notice how when you pick the toes up, it takes more weight into your heels? Yeah. Yeah. So right away, you get that biofeedback. And then I say, now relax your toes. And now press down through the center of the leg. Push down Mm -hmm. in the space between the shin bone and the fibula. Mm. Feel the front edge of the heel bone and the back cup of the heel bone. Mm -hmm. And notice how stable and connected you feel to the earth. Mm -hmm. And then I like for people to rock on the feet because you can feel, Lizzie, as you transfer weight toward the forefoot, toward the toes, that you become inherently less stable. Yeah, I just read something in mom's book, Yoga Body, that didn't entirely make sense to me. And maybe this is opening a can of worms, but that's what we're good at. Um, So I read that this is dorsiflexion? That's plantar flexion. That's dorsiflexion. So this is dorsiflexion. This is plantar. That in plantar flexion, that's the position where the ankle is least stable and that the ankle is more, yeah, it's just that that's the position of least stability for the ankle, which would be the position of high heel shoes. Yes. So can you say one thing about that? In terms of movement, Lizzie, in plantar flexion, you're pushing off the earth. You're not... You're not trying to bear weight. You're trying to push Mm -hmm. away from the earth to take a step. Right. Right. But when we want to take weight, we we strike with the heel. Mm -hmm. If we just break down what's happening in gait. Right. Okay. So, right. Yeah. Okay. So, we're putting the weight here. And then we're on my back foot. And now as I transfer forward, I'm then the propulsion. I'm pushing my body forward and releasing the weight. And so you can imagine if you're walking in high heels, Mm -hmm. the weight is being driven into bony structures and of the feet that aren't actually designed to bear weight. They're designed to propel you forward. So you're teetering around. And that's, my twisted ankles, broken ankles are actually a common hazard of heels. Right. Because we've removed the weight-bearing bony structure from the ankle. Mm-hmm. Fascinating. 
<laughs> what well, well, last thing do you want to tell us? I, I, I feel as though you're energetically covering your mouth. I am because there's so much I want to say about shoes. <laughs> okay. So, Mary Richards, where can we find you on the internet? At maryrichardsyoga.com and on Facebook at A Little Yoga Goes a Long Way. Okay, I'm lizzielassiter.com, Instagram, Facebook, and the course that we are so passionate about that we're working on together is experientialanatomy.yoga. Namaste. Namaste.